Welcome back to the Clara CFO Group channel. Today we are going to talk about QuickBooks Online inventory. Okay, so we're gonna get into the inventory module in QuickBooks Online, and then we're going to talk about how you can put items into inventory. We're gonna talk about editing an actual inventory item, how uh, when you purchase items, how do they get into inventory, and then also how do you sell items and have it affect the inventory balance. So um, we'll talk about invoicing as well. So we're kind of going to take an item through the process so you can see how it flows through QuickBooks and that way you can determine if you need to use this for your business or if you need to have another app that gets attached to QuickBooks Online or if you want to stay really simple and use a spreadsheet for the few things you have, uh, you can decide what you wanna do. This video is really just to help you see kind of the ins and outs of how it works, okay? So we're gonna get into a screen share and I will do that in just a second. If you aren't already subscribed to the channel we would love to have you here please go ahead and click the subscribe button and also click the little notification bell because you will be notified when we post a new video okay well let's go ahead and get into the screen share and i will walk you through quickbooks online inventory here we go okay here we are in quickbooks online and we are in the sample company i've showed you guys this before and i am also in the accountant view. So if yours does not look like this, you can go to the gear icon. It'll say down here, switch to accountant view. And I'm in biz, um, if I went here, I would be going to the view that you would be on <laughs> if it doesn't look like this. So we are in the accountant view. And when we are going to go to inventory, you go to sales, because if you have inventory, you would be selling it to customers, right? And then you can go down to products and services. So if you might be confused and thinking like, where's inventory? I don't know where inventory is, but it's all under products and services over here. And so what you'll find is this sample company has been set up with some interesting items because this is a landscape services company. So they do some services and then they also do hardscaping and landscaping. So they do have some inventory. In this case, there are some items that are set up here. And so you can see they've got some services and you can look at, you can see what if it's a service or if it's inventory by the type here. And then they don't really have a lot here, but we will um, add something so you can see. So if you wanted to create a new item, you've got these different options here. So inventory is um, products that you buy or sell and you wanna keep track of, and they will affect cost of goods sold as well. So when you sell them, it will move out of inventory and go to cost of goods sold. And then non-inventory items are things that you do buy and you wanna keep track of, but you're not gonna be selling them on like a unit for unit basis and you're not going to be tracking quantities in specifics. And uh, to be honest, we really don't use this one very often. Sometimes there's gonna be some things you sell and it's not a service and it's not inventory and so you'll use this non-inventory item. But most things, if it's, if it's physical and you wanna keep track of it, inventory, and then you have the option of doing services. So this is like CFO services, for example, or like in this case for this client, they have design services down here. It's grayed out, but you can see it there. Services would be any anything that doesn't have like a unit attached to it. And then you can bundle things. So if you have maybe three different inventory items that you like to sell together into a bundle, and maybe they are slightly discounted when you bundle them together, you can create a bundle, okay? Let's go ahead and create a new inventory item. And so I can give it a name. Um, I'm going to create something for this landscape company. So I'm going to call this, we just do something simple like, here we go, tulip bulbs. I have tulips behind me, <laughs> tulip bulbs, okay? And then let's give it a skew. We're not, it doesn't look like they're really, well, maybe they're using some skews. Maybe there's a numbering system that you like to use internally. I'm gonna follow what um, they have over here for some of their other SKUs. And then we can put it into a category. So you can create different categories. It looks like they have um, design and landscaping and then pest control. I'm going to put this, I guess, under landscaping. And then I'm gonna say I have 100 on hand. And then that means, that means like when you're first creating this item, how many do you have at that point in time? And then you can put the as of date. So let's say as of April 30th, when this is being done, there's a hundred. You can put a reorder point. So if you know you always need to keep some in stock, 
maybe um, if you go lower than 20, you need to reorder. So I usually don't use that, but it is something that you can use in the system. And then you'll assign an inventory account. So every time you purchase this item, what account on the balance sheet is it going to be going towards? So if you have complicated inventory, different inventory assets, you can put it to that account. But in this situation, we just have one line item that says inventory asset. And then you can do a description. So this is what will show up when you pull down, like if you make an invoice for a client and you sell them tulip bulbs, they will, uh, this description will pop up. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna leave it blank for now. No, I can put uh, tulip bulbs, pink and white or something like that, if that's the description. Let's do just $5 and these might be packages of tulip bulbs okay nobody nobody come after me for making a unrealistic uh, example okay and then you're going to assign this to an income account as well so this can be helpful when you have multiple different sales line items and you want to make sure that every time you sell that item that that sale gets recorded to the right thing on the PL. Okay. So that's how you do it. You do it here. And then if you need to do a sales tax, you can put in uh, sales tax rates here. And then when you're buying something, you will have like, let's say you put together a purchase order and you put together the purchase order and you sent it to your vendor so that they could send you an invoice before you pay the bill. If that's the case, this is the description you can put on there. Sometimes vendors will want to see different descriptions than what you put on your invoice to your customer. Okay. Because they might want like an internal code or something to you know buy the right inventory, but then your customer doesn't need necessarily need to see that they want to know what they've purchased so that you can, you can, it doesn't have to be just one description on both the, the buying and the selling side, which I think is really nice actually. And then let's say the cost is 250. Okay. And then the expense account would be cost of goods sold. Every time you buy it, it would go there and then preferred vendor you can put in a preferred vendor here. So let's just say, let's do Tanya's nursery. Okay. And then we're going to save and close. Okay. So now if I scroll down here under landscaping, I should have my tulip bulbs and there they are. Okay, so there they are sitting in inventory. I can see how many quantities are on hand. I can see that they're taxable. Well, let's first, let's sell these tulip bulbs. So let's go ahead and sell these to someone. We're going to sell them to Diego Rodriguez and he's gonna get some tulip bulbs. So when you're filling out your invoice, you're gonna type in your product and service that you're selling. And see here's that description that we put in there and then let's say since there's one quantity times five it would just be five dollars but he actually wants ten and so then his invoice would be for fifty dollars and then i've dated this for today and i'm just going to click save and send okay send and close all right so it's reminding me that I'm not actually sending an email to anybody. But now let's go ahead and look at what that did in the accounting system. So let's look at our profit and loss. And then we're going to run it through today. Actually, I'm just going to take this to April. And then I'm going to do it on accrual because we haven't been paid for it. So I'm going to run this based on accrual because that's the only way it would show up on here. And then let's go ahead and do... So QuickBooks is playing around with this different view for transaction reports. I'm not sure I love it. I'm gonna switch back to the classic view and then I'm gonna switch this so we can see everything. And we're gonna find that invoice and I'm gonna show you. Here it is. Here's that Diego Rodriguez under sales of product income, okay? So if I wanted to have this show up in a different item, I could go back to that edit feature of the individual tulip bulbs when I was setting it up and I could change the, the income line item. So if it was, this ends up being the wrong place, I could do that, but here it is. So that's how it works. If um, we were on cash basis, this invoice wouldn't show up because we haven't been paid yet for it. So there's that. So what happens after you're out of tulip bulbs and you need to 
come and buy some more. I will show you guys what to do there. And then we're gonna go to um, expenses. There's a couple different ways you can do this actually. I will show you here. Let's go and do a bill. And we're going to add a bill. And you can also, I'm gonna show you another quick way to do that. Up here in the plus new, up here in the top left, you can just go straight to bill. It's kind of the shortcut. All right, so let's go, what was the name of that? Tanya's Nursery was our preferred vendor, okay? And let's say that we want to, we've placed an order with Tanya. I will show you guys how to do a purchase order. But let's say you placed an order over the phone with Tanya and you said, hey Tanya, I need 200 more tulip bulbs. If you could get those ready for me, I'm gonna come over and she says, great, sure, I'm gonna send you over a bill so you can come in with a check, okay? So you actually have a bill, you know how much you need to pay her. Uh, let's go ahead and put that bill in. So let's just say this is due on receipt and that she's we're doing this order today on April 30th. And uh, let's say there's a bill number, you got her bill and it's bill 607. And instead of doing this category detail down here, you're gonna skip over that part and you're gonna go down here to item details, okay? Most bills, when you enter them, like let's say you get a utility bill or something like that, you're gonna just enter in like utilities here and put it as an expense. But since we are doing inventory, we need to do something different. So we're gonna use this items details section down here. And you'll see that I don't have, if I was using this category details, I don't have any way to search a product here I can only do that when I'm down here in item details, okay? So we're going to find our item and then I'm going to buy 200 of them, okay? And then I'm just gonna leave it as that and we're gonna go ahead and just click save, okay? So now this bill, if you are on cash basis, you would not see it on the PL yet, but let's go ahead and look at it on an accrual basis. And now I'm gonna show you two different things. I'm gonna show you the balance sheet because the balance sheet as of today should have, if we are in accrual, should have 200 more tulip bulbs in it. There it is right there. Tanya's Nursery, $500 was added, increased the balance of the inventory asset, okay? So you can see that. And then, so that's the balance sheet side of the transaction. So that's where you see the inventory being added. And then actually the other side of that transaction right now until that bill is paid is sitting in accounts payable. So it's all on the balance sheet, this part right now. So there's that Tanya's Nursery down there for $500 and it's a bill and it's been unpaid. Once it is paid, then the cash is gonna go out and remove this accounts payable, okay? So there is a P&L side when we sell the item. So remember that we went and we found the, what was it, sales of product income. That's where when we sold the invoice or we sold the tulips to Diego, we saw the $50 for the tulip bulbs here. Now, when we go back to the P&L, there's two sides of that transaction. So when we sell it, that's the income part, but also there's the expense part. So the cost of goods sold for that transaction is down here in the cost of goods sold section of the P&L. And when we do that, we will see 10 times 250 because that was the cost of the item. And so $25 is recorded, okay? Now, I didn't have to manually do this cost of goods sold thing. This all happened on its own. The system is doing this part. So when you sell something, you get the income part, and then you also get the expense part are just gonna happen. QuickBooks is going to do that for you. Once you create an invoice and you and it has inventory items on it, those transactions are gonna happen, okay? Now, if this is cash basis, let's go back to that. Let's say this is cash basis you won't see either of those items because no cash has traded hands, okay? So once the cash is recorded, then you'd be able to see the effects of those things on the cash basis. But this is a sample company. I can't actually receive cash here. <laughs> so, okay, that is how inventory flows. So you buy goods from your customer and then they go into the system, you add them through a bill or an expense, um, and then they sit in inventory until you sell them and you sell them by invoicing customers here.
Okay, that's a very, very simple overview of the inventory system in QuickBooks Online. Now I will say that as you get bigger and you have a higher volume of transactions, you're going to probably need something that will interface with like a point of sale system, or you're going to need something that you're not obviously going to be sending manual invoices every time you sell things. Like let's say you're an e-commerce company or something like that. You're not going to be able to do this manual process that I just showed you for every single sale. So there are apps and tools and things that interface with QuickBooks Online. And um, some of them will be apps that actually keep the inventory out of QuickBooks altogether and just post journal entries to those key accounts that I told you about, like the income, cost of goods sold, inventory accounts. They'll just post kind of bulk journal entries. So you really, I, I would recommend maybe talking to a QuickBooks expert if you do have inventory and you're trying to figure out which is the best way to go here because depending on volume, QuickBooks inventory does have some limitations. So you do want to think about that, but I think it works really well for a company like this that has services and products all together and they invoice their customers and they're probably not going to have a huge volume of invoices every single month this makes a lot of sense. And then there's there's a lot of a lot of times really where it makes a lot of sense, but then there's going to be some times where you might need to have a third-party app to come in. Now, the great thing is that pretty much every third-party app is going to interface with QuickBooks Online because it is the biggest software for small business accounting. So you're in a good place if you're gonna need to grow and scale as your business grows, QuickBooks Online really is like the, the best place to start. So. Keep that in mind. Uh, remember that you have to be at the plus subscription to have the inventory module. And then if you need QuickBooks Online, definitely use my discount code because it will get you that full year at 30%. Most of the offers for QuickBooks Online are going to be 50% for three months. Maybe you might even get like 70% for three months, but that doesn't add up if you do the math. Having 30% off for a full year is a better deal. Okay. So, and it does support the channel when you do that. So I appreciate it, but thank you guys for watching. If you have any other questions about inventory, please put them in the comment section below and I will talk to you later. Bye.